Hey, everyone, and welcome to Keep Advancement with Miss Coco Bowden right here on iHeartRadio, Spotify, also your local channel, listening from VAC Gospel Network and others. Y'all, thank you so much for tuning in to Keep Advancement. This is our Keep Advancement Empowerment Conference call flash class. This is our week of boot camp. We're still in boot camp, folks, and I hope that you have been taking it serious and enjoying it at the same time, embracing the new things, the new challenges that God is setting before us. So before I get started, let me go ahead and pray us in. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I come to you on this day just thankful, just thankful as can be, Lord. I thank you for all. I thank you for the sparing of lives, God. I thank you for the waking up and those of them that are going to sleep, God. I thank you for the safety of your people, God. I thank you for your healing, oh God. Lord, I ask you right now to send down your Holy Spirit. I invite the Holy Spirit into this class, oh God, that we may thrive in this season, oh God, that we will survive in this season, oh God, that we will not break, we will not shatter, but we will stand in boldness and carriage, oh God, that we may may um, fight our battles wisely, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And, Lord, I ask you that the crisis that are going on in our lives, oh, God, I ask you if it be so in your will to come and peace be still. Send your peace, oh, God, in the midst of trouble. Someone who's in trouble right now, oh, God, someone who has a troubled heart, a troubled mind, oh, God, and don't know which way to turn or what to do, oh, God, I ask that you calm the storm, oh, God, and give them clear direction to what they need to do next, oh, God. And, Lord, I ask you to decrease this flesh of mine, oh, God, that I may teach your word, oh, God, that people may have an understanding, have wisdom from you, God, and understanding, oh, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. And, Lord, I ask that if there are any sick among us, anybody that's going through any situation, oh, God, any situation, oh, God, and we're talking about small ones and big ones, God, that's causing a disturbance in their mindset, oh, God. I ask you to calm it down and regulate the their emotions, oh, God, that they may be able to do what is needed to do in this season in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> All right, y'all, so excuse me if you hear me clear my throat. I have some allergies going on, and they do not feel good. Um, <clears throat> I've had to clear my throat about all day. just feels like I'm getting congestion and stuff. But, y'all, I even pray for myself, Lord, touch my throat, clear out this congestion in a supernatural way in the mighty name of Jesus, oh, God, if it be so in your will. Okay, y'all, so um, we are in Kiva Boot Camp. This is the sixth week right now. Can you believe it? We're already in the sixth week of Kiva Boot Camp, and, y'all, I can tell you it has been a push, a push. You know what I'm saying? It's birthing something new. There is something new in this season that is birthing, and it's because you chose to be obedient and do the will of the Lord. Amen. And so, y'all, we talked about the four R's of be your own first responder here in the Kiva Boot Camp. And I want to let y'all know as well that I am coming up with a shirt line um, for Kiva Boot Camp. It will have on their Kiva um, mental health, women's mental health awareness. And I hope that you stop over to my Facebook page, which is Kiva Advancement Empowerment Conference Call with Ms. Coco Bowden. And on that call, on that line, um, I mean, on that Facebook page, you will see um, shortly that I'm going to be posting shirt, shirts that you can purchase along with a link if you want to. Now, that's up to y'all if you want to, but you don't have to, you know. It's just if you want to be a blessing, if you want to sow a seed in this season, that's the way to do it is to go ahead and represent Christ by standing up and being your own first responder and drawing people to Christ because when they see your testimony, when they see how you're a testament, then they will become a testimony too because they'll be like, oh, my goodness, God did that for her in that little bit of time. Let me see what this God is about. Let me test him and see what he's about. 
You know what I'm saying? So let's continue to live our lives holy. Okay, so um, we did the four R's, which was readiness. That means that we're mental aware. And then we did response, which means we're actually responding to the situation. We are assessing it, and we're calming down so that we can handle the situation at hand. And then um, um, uh, what was the next one at the readiness? Oh, my goodness, y'all, I kind of forgot. At the readiness was... um, recovery and and during recovery this is the time where we need to start getting our health together where we need to start eating right and making sure that we're exercising so that we can still stand strong in the battle amen and then it was uh resilient the fourth week we had the fourth and fifth week i think no the fifth week was resilience how we can still get up because we trust god that we're not going to just lay here and take it like that from you satan we're going to stand up we're going to be resilient we're going to have confidence in the lord that he will grant us the ability to handle our crisis to handle our situation in the mighty name of jesus amen all right, so this week is the sixth week, and I know y'all been pushing hard with the squats and the exercises, and as I say every week, modify. What you cannot do, modify. This week, you need to put in 75 squats per day and also 50 sit-ups per day with your additional exercise, and make sure that you're still eating right. And in addition to that as well, um, I've added in there for you to write a love letter each morning to yourself. It's okay to write yourself and write the self that you want to be, you know. It's okay to love on yourself so that you can love others. So I encourage you to write that love letter every morning and you hold on to it because you're going to need it. You're going to need those love letters next week. So hold on to those love letters that you write. And at nighttime, your nightly routine, make sure that you are getting in the bed by 11 p.m. and that you're sleeping by 12. And I know that's not easy for a lot of people who have insomnia. So I know it's not easy, but do the best you can. You know, if you got to get in that bed at 8 (laughs) o'clock, get in there and do the best you can. Because what we are doing is upsetting the process that Satan, we're upsetting the routine that Satan gave you. Amen? Because you've been in that same routine so long that it's become comfortable to you and you're used to it. And it, it still is frustrating, but God wants to do a new thing in your life. And when he wants to do a new thing, that means you've got to come forth. You've got to spring up and be willing to change because you know that God is able to bring you through. So I do want to welcome you back, and whoever just joined the line, welcome you on the Key Investment Empowerment Podcast line. Um, so we have been learning in these last five weeks how to manage the everyday crisis in our lives. And believe it or not, I just went through one, but all is well. Amen. It was a small one, but all is well. Okay, and the four R's of a first responder created by Navy SEAL trainer Mark Devine, we actually modeled our crisis intervention by his uh, model that he had. But now that we have finished his part, now we're on to a whole other thing. Because if you did it correctly, then you have learned that being your own first responder means to be able to adapt in the midst of a crisis being able to breathe and not feel like this is it, God ain't going to help me, or feel like, you know, assume the worst, have negative thoughts toward the situation. And and now you should be able to come up with quick solutions in the middle of a crisis and, and changing your routine and your thought patterns, you know, giving your brain something different to eat, doing different activities. Now, in week five, no, this is week six, y'all. I'm sorry. I am so sorry. In week six, what we're talking about is um, personal and spiritual growth. And I want to tell you something, that both are necessary during and after a crisis. Crisis intervention, the more mentally stable you are, 
the better off you can handle crisis situations. And in order to be stable-minded, you've got to know God. You've got to have a relationship with God. There is no way around it. There is no if, ands, and buts. It's only one way, and that's through Jesus Christ, the truth and the light. That's the only way to make it through these crises without breaking down. And, and, you know, some people go through a crisis, and after that one crisis, they they end up in um, – in some of these mental institutions, because they couldn't handle it. It was too much for them. Or either they end up on a lot of medications because now they're schizophrenic, bipolar, um, going through major depressive moments, episodes of it. And that's what we want to do. We want to break those barriers down where Satan can no longer have you in his routine. That's why it's important to have that morning routine. And I know some of the women were like, well, I already got a routine. Um, I already make my bed. So what? That's not what I asked you. Whenever you have your own routine and you're already familiar with what you want to do, what are you learning from that? How are you growing from that? If you're already saying, I already do this, I already do that, and and you're not looking at it in a different way, what if you were handicapped? How do you think some people with one hand look when it comes time to make up the bed and stuff? They look at it as a blessing. They don't just look at it as, oh, my God, I'm going to go through trouble. And you know why that is? That's because some people that are handicapped were born like that, and so they learn how to adapt to their environment and do what it was that they had to do. They learned how to intervene just the way they were. And some of you, you can't grow because you don't know how to um, allow the Lord to do something different in your life because it's that fear of unknown, the fear of, well, if I change up my routine now, you know, it's just going to make it harder on me, so I'm just going to keep everything like it is. You know, everything has a season, and sometimes that season that you're in, when it gets up, you want to remain in it because it feels so comfortable and familiar to you But as I say always, those familiar spirits will break you down. Those familiar spirits can hold you hostage in bondage because they don't want you to change your routine. Okay, so it doesn't matter also when it comes down to personal growth and spiritual growth. We're going to lean more toward the spiritual side, okay, y'all? And then you'll learn how it ties in there. With The more spiritual growth you have, the more your life will change. Each time you grow, your life is going to change, and you're going to develop. It's not just going to be growth, but it's going to be development. And when we talk about development, that means when you start creating, you know, you start not just growing yourself, but now you're in a position where you can help others. So now you're developing, and and you're developing your relationship with God. It's unfolding each day, each morning that you get up, This relationship is growing stronger through prayer, all right? So I want to just let you all know, and this is no shade toward anybody who writes self-help books because I write too, but I want to always remind people that when you are growing, there is no better direction than God. You can get self-help books all you want to, But if you do not have the word word of God in you, then you will not have those fruits of the spirit to even help you um, understand and comprehend and have patience to work the process. So it doesn't matter how many self-help books you have, how good you can quote even the Bible scriptures. If you don't have God down on the inside and have faith in him to see yourself through each battle, you will break either in the middle of the storm, the beginning of the storm, or the end of the storm. No one knows what you can handle better than God. And you know why that is? That is because he created us. He created us in his likeness, in his image, and he knows the plans. Listen, you hear this all the time, but I need you to take it to heart. He knows the plans that he has for your life. Amen? So let's go to 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. 
if you have your body.